I'm an out-of-touch gamer. I'll admit it. I've never really played Minecraft before. The, I said it. I know. One of the greatest and biggest games of all time. Maybe my biggest gaming L, except when I downloaded Elden Ring and then got a refund because it was, it was just too hard for me. <laughs> but from everything that I've seen in Minecraft online, it's a sandbox where you go in and you make your own adventure, you make your own story. So I was a little shocked when I saw that there's complete lore of Minecraft. That's a 24 minute video worth of Minecraft lore and game theory now. I didn't realize that this was even a thing. I knew that you had to fight an ender dragon. I knew that there was some ender man type character and the nether. But apart from Minecraft content that I've consumed online, I really have no idea what's going on with this. So let's see what the Minecraft lore is like from the perspective of someone that's never played the game. Today we end the horror. Four oh wow, that's really? Really, we're ending it? Hor horror's done everyone, no more horror movies. Four years, three games, 35 theories, all leading up. Wait, three games? Minecraft, the Minecraft story modes, Minecraft dungeons. Is that with the three games? This moment. Uh, hold on. Haven't we done this intro before? Uh, that was for FNAF. This is Minecraft. It's totally different. Oh. And there was a lot more than three games of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, we have the old intro. I really do love this intro. Man, that takes me back, dude. This really takes me back. Oh, seven theories remain. Internet. Well I really, he's really doing like a, a hall of fame of all the theories that he wants to do before MatPat uh, closes up the books forever. If you don't know, MatPat is uh, gonna be leaving the video production side of game theory uh, in about seven theories. He's done a video on how to create or how to basically teach kids or people that don't play video games how to play video games uh, in the best way. And now we're doing the complete law of Minecraft. We're like going through all, we're doing the completionist list right now. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's been building Minecraft's lore one block at a time. You know, for as much attention as FNAF gets on the channel, it's easy to overlook what we've done for other game franchises. He's got to do another Five Nights at Freddy's one, surely. I mean, there's got to be one more. I know we already have the complete ultimate timeline, but I'm sure he's got one more in him. 36 Mario theories, 31 Pokemon theories, three wow. Hello Neighbor theories, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but let's be honest with ourselves, it's probably too many. But of them all, I would say that our Minecraft series is probably the most important. 35 episodes in total. 35? Impressive collection. Can you punch a tree to death? What's a creeper? Yeah, you, no, you totally can. You can totally punch a tree to death. I don't care what you said in that video. I could totally punch a tree to death. Is that toxic of me to think that I can punch a tree to death? Is the overworld a sphere or a cube? But I think our biggest contribution to this franchise has to be figuring out that there was an actual story hidden inside this seemingly storyless game. For as long there are villagers, and there is the Ender Dragon, and there's the end. Uh, is the Enderman even still in the game? I don't know, man. Minecraft had been around, and for as many videos existed about the topic, we were able to crack into something that no one had noticed before. That the placement of the blocks, the treasures hidden inside of chests, the spawn locations, the item drops, all of them told a story. And Wait, really? I thought the placement of the blocks was randomized. So, over the next four years, we chipped away at that story, bit by bit, mob by mob. The Enderman, the Drowned, the Wither, the Warden. And over the years, the a Warden came into focus. A story of an ancient civilization's rise and their tragic fall. A tale. Oh my God! It's a Bronze Age story. The Bronze Age collapse. An excess. A tale that serves as a warning to us. Hubris and excess. Wait, it's the it's the Eldar from Warhammer 40k when they had too much sex and made a sex god that killed them all. Player out here in the real world. World. Except there is just one problem. 35 theories, it's a lot to keep track of. And just like we often see with FNAF, I started seeing a number of comments over in the subreddit begging me to set the record straight. To make one up-to-date definitive resource compiling all of our theories into one coherent location. So I put all these theories onto the crafting table and enchanted them with efficiency 5 to turn those 35 theories into this. One easy to digest 25, 30 minute-ish video. Not exactly sure where it's gonna land. Anyway, we'd best... Actually, 24. You really managed to condense it down, MatPat. Or, I guess, the new person that may have written the script for this video, considering the, the new person is helping writing the scripts. I don't know if MatPat is helping writing the script because he's leaving soon, so he wants to have his own personal touch on the script, or if it's just the new person. I guess you could always have a look in the description and see what it says. Write as Matthew Patrick. Oh my god, his name is actually Matthew Patrick. I thought that was a joke. Tom Robinson and Eddie Nussel Gamer Robinson. Okay, so I believe one of these two is the new the new game theory guy that's going to be taken over soon. 
I'm interested to see how that goes. Putin's swiftness if we want to get through all of this. Mm, delectable. Well, not quite, because before we get to all that, I just wanted to quickly tell you that the FNAF theory wear line is officially back. Ooh, so if you missed that looks nice. Last time, don't let this one pass you by. Head on over to theorywear.com now and grab them before they're really gone forever. Okay, now we're ready to build up on that Minecraft lore. Let's go. I like how Scott is just completely okay with people using his his franchise to make merch and stuff from. I know that Genshin Impact is the same. You can basically just use Genshin Impact stuff and you can just make Genshin Impact merch. And I think that's really cool. And I think that copyright is dumb and we should let more people do that. <laughs> Our story in the beginning, Minecraft Legends, a game what is that, that? came out in April of last year, but gave us a lot of lore to chew on. The overworld's in danger. The piglins have come from the nether and are now invading the overworld. When the game puts the invasion down to greed, I have a suspicion that it's due to something else. Sure, the piglins are greedy for gold. We see that in vanilla Minecraft, and there is plenty of- I mean, You just dropped a gold sword in front of him. Of course he's gonna pick it up. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. I don't need gold swords. If someone drops a gold sword in front of me and just says, yeah, there you go, then I'm gonna pick it up too. Am I, sorry, am I greedy? Am I greedy little goblin now? They have gold in Minecraft Legends, but the nether isn't exactly low on that stuff. They don't use things like diamonds or iron or tools or armor. They just hoard all that in chests. They don't understand their real value. Instead, I believe- Oh, they're like dragons. The world ...because the nether was in trouble. You see, the nether used to be a cool and icy place. That's the only way for the basalt deltas to have formed. Basalt requires blue eyes. Ice, the coldest ice imaginable to form, and for a lava to flow next to it above a layer of soul soil, which means that ice must have been naturally forming in the nether at one point. However, as we see in Legends, the piglins have industrialized. They have gold wow. and armor, items that require gold ingots that can't be found naturally. They have to be smelted from nether gold ore or crafted using gold nuggets. This process, in turn, created greenhouse gases, causing the intense heating of the atmosphere down. Oh my god, they did global warming. They did pig global warming with their gold. The nether. And because the nether is also two and a half times smaller than the overworld, less heat is needed to make all that ice melt and the water to ultimately run dry. This leaves the piglins looking for a new world that isn't a fiery wasteland to call their own. And so they look out to the overworld. This is where our first builder comes in. They're busy mining away in a normal Minecraft world, but are interrupted by three godlike beings called hosts. The what? Where did this come from? Is <laughs> Whoa, that's something to just pull out your pocket. Takers of the overworld. They ask this mysterious builder to help save the overworld from the piglin threat, giving you the tools necessary to do the job. Within this case, burn the flames of creation. The flames will call upon friends to fight by your side. This is the banner of God. Okay. Raise it high, and this world will rise to your aid. With the right melodies from this loot, the LAs will gather your resources. <laughs> Keep them safe for you and build whatever you need. Thanks to the Alay and the hosts, this mysterious builder stops the piglin invasion and peace is restored to the overworld. Okay, but the piglins are totally bugging now, right? Like, they're just gonna die. They have no water. They, they're just gonna straight up die. Oh. We did it! We condemned a civilization to ruin. <laughs> Oh, I guess they shouldn't have been so greedy with all that gold then, right? The remains of the conflict are broken nether portals scattered throughout the overworld, but it's still a bittersweet ending. The so is this a prequel to Minecraft? ...that helped win the battle now have a taste for fighting. What's happening? How did they learn to fight? By watching our hero. This is what turns them into the violent mobs that we know in vanilla Minecraft. Even the villagers weren't immune to this effect. After being given the tools to fight, a group of them would continue to have anger within them once the war is over. They were dubbed the Illagers. And their existence proved that the illagers, <laughs> even their skin changes color, what was meant to be a time of peace, was actually cursed by the knowledge of violence and war. They didn't know about violence before this. How how idealistic. How nice. Everyone's just super precious to each other. Their companions bringing peace. The hosts decide it's time to leave. There are endless worlds out there waiting to be explored. Letting the builders be in charge of the world. So they begin to do what they did when the hosts first called them. They mine and they craft. They start a new civilization. They become the first of the ancient builders. And we see this on some of the pottery sherds from the Trails and Tales update. Pottery sherds in the real world tell us the story of past civilizations. And so sherds like Howl and Sheaf depict the earliest parts of the ancient builder society, where wolves were some of the first animals domesticated, and wheat was one of the earliest and easiest crops to grow. Or just like real life. This rapid growth is the beginning of the ancient builder's biggest problem, over-harvesting and depleting the world of its natural resources. The Uh-oh, it sounds like they're making the piglin problem. They're doing the, they're doing the same thing. Here come the greenhouse gases. Food. And so they hunted the creatures from Minecraft legends like the Regal Tiger and Big Beak into- 
To extinction? Extinction. Completely yep. destroying their habitats so they could build this new society. The same goes for resources like diamond, copper, and coal. At first, these were just lying around on the surface of the overworld. But by modern day, we're digging deep into the earth before finding just one block of diamond ore. This led to valuable resources becoming scarce and splitting the ancient builders into tribes based on their location and the natural resources around them. We see this in the sherds, which are scattered across different biomes, all depicting different resources and technologies. We got fishing rod, hay, and then bow and arrow. I guess this makes sense depending on where you live because they're near the sea, they have a fishing rod. They're in an arable land that can grow crops, you have hay. And you're in the desert, so you just have to fucking kill things. So you have a bow and arrow to kill the, kill the birds, I guess, the horses maybe? Are we killing the ox? They become hoarders of their own specific resource. We're killing the cactus. Oh yeah, of course, cactus. And thus, trade begins between the tribes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just trade for a cactus? Is that a fish? It's a fish. Why do you want a cactus that badly? Are they tasty? The villagers who used to just simply give the builders their resources. They also got in on the trading action and are still doing it to this very day. Yeah, because they realized that they were getting scammed. I'm sorry, they were giving you these resources for free? For free? When they have so much money they could be making? Goes on, the ancient builders continue in their worship of the hosts, the godlike beings that brought them there, building structures like the desert and jungle temples, all with unique designs to demonstrate their different resources and culture, much like we cool. see out in the real world. But the ocean tribe decided to take it a step further. This tribe of fishermen that we learn about from the angler shirt built the massive ocean monuments, styled like wow. a rot, a structure that was used to connect the people to their gods. This God, that's so impressive. You ever think about how this kind of structure was created way back in the day where there was very few tools to use. You just had to use labor and you just had to put every single brick down by hand, stack it single brick by single brick, craft every single brick and then and, and eventually make this. The pyramids, man. How did, how did we even do that? How do we do the pyramids? This was the ancient builders trying to reconnect with the hosts, hoping that they would maybe return and save them from this world that they created. They even built a replica of the Well of Fate atop the structure. No, they had created your own demise, just like the piglins did that caused them to go to war. You have also valuable, you have stripped your world of valuable resources and now you must pay the price of your hubris and greed. Out of the same prismarine and placed an offering of gold at its core, the spoils of their victory against the piglins, all in the hope that it would bring the hosts back. What they don't realize though is that the real monster isn't other tribes, it's themselves. The fishermen continued to destroy the natural environment for resources, crafting and smelting tools and ore, causing pollution and eventually leading to massive flooding. They tried desperately to protect their monuments, these temples that the hosts may one day return to, and so they fill these monuments with sponges, trying to hold back the rising water, but it's too sponges? much sponges. The water keeps rising, and they wait. Is that real? They put sponges inside of it. I can't imagine trying to protect a house from being flooded by just like scattering sponges all over the place. Like, oh no, it's raining really hardly. Hold. Hold on, let me just put some sponges. <laughs> Can't hold it back from filling the monuments. But they don't give up. Pottery sherds found in cold underwater ruins like Blade, Explorer, and Plenty reveal that this tribe was more than just fishermen. They were pirates. They would go from village to village trying to nice. get the resources that they had squandered, which led to other tribes like the Desert Tribe fighting back. Mine and prize sherds found in the desert temples depict the tribe creating mine shafts, now needing to go deep underground to find the precious materials that were once so easy to find. So with ingenuity, on the loose, looting and pillaging, they needed to find a way to protect their resources, and they found that protection with a Walls. creature that they once called an ally. We see their face chiseled into the sandstone walls of their temple. The creepers? A creature with the ultimate defense system, the creeper. The desert tribe booby-trapped their temples with TNT, similar to how real-world pyramids use traps to scare away thieves, though- Is this true? Dude, I've always wanted to know if pyramids still have traps in them. Like, if you go inside of it, if you really delve into the deepest depths of it, would you would you trigger a massive bowl to come and roll it after you? Is, this, is that real? Or is that just made up from Indiana Jones? Oh, not quite as explosive. If anyone tried to take their valued possessions, the TNT would be their last fail safe. No one was going to mess with this tribe and get away with it. But the pirates... Oh, blow up your possessions as well. I guess it's a case of if I can't have it, then no nails can, right? Oh, really only after one thing. Within the shipwrecks you find across the overworld, there are chests containing treasure maps. These maps can lead you to buried chests containing the heart of the sea. The heart of the sea, when crafted with eight nautilus shells, can create what? a conduit. An item capable oh, oh. of giving anyone in the area water breathing, night vision, and haste. This was the ocean tribe's final hope of surviving the constantly rising water. And while the Oh my god, they just want to live in Atlantis. The pirates looked for this treasure. The fishermen that stayed back home created the Guardians, machine bodyguards for their sacred temples as a last resort of protecting it. Given the state that we find the ocean monuments in in vanilla Minecraft, we know that they weren't successful. The Is this explained in Minecraft? I thought you just 
build houses. Pirates didn't find the treasure in time, and so the fishermen left behind in the monuments become trapped in water and transformed into the drowned, still carrying Nautilus oh. shells as well as tridents. Ancient. Oh god, well, it looks like their chondroid didn't work very well if it transforms them into this ugly ass creature. They look all briny. They look like they're straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean. I actually kind of dig it, though. I think it's really cool. Because why would you need clothes when you're always underwater? I mean, prevent you from being naked, I suppose. But of course, it's going to get tattered. Eventually, you're just going to totally forget you're wearing clothes in the first place. Tools for fishing. They continue to stay by their monuments, never having their call for help answered by the hosts. All they have left are the guardians, who still recognize their creators and don't attack. Sadly, the fishermen weren't the only tribe to be facing hardship. After seeing the devastation that the ocean... What do you do all day if you live in an underwater city like that? Because you can't have phones and you can't have you can't have internet. You can't watch Netflix. You can't watch videos. You can't watch YouTube.com slash powers or YouTube.com slash game theory. So what do you do all day? You can't even exercise, really. I mean, you can swim, but you can't do weightlifting. On the water, I just wouldn't really work, would it? The tribe had caused to themselves, in spite of their constant prayers, the desert tribe gave up on the hosts ever returning and took matters into their own hands. The also, the drowned have to stay within a certain range of the conduit, right? To, in order to maintain their water breathing. Otherwise, they just- Oh, they drown! <laughs> desert temples depict the Ankh, a symbol of life. This is what the desert tribe dedicated their time and effort towards. Rather than waiting for the hosts to return, they wanted a way to preserve their lives and resurrect those who had already died. But- They're not coming back, I'm sorry. Well, the builders were reminded of the spawners given to them by the hosts. These He's called, oh my god, one of them's called Foresight and they have four eyes. That's really funny. Spawners could create mobs from nothing but stone and wood, but they required an energy source to fuel the flames of creation. And that fuel was lapis lazuli. And the only way they knew how to get it was from uh -huh. war, killing piglins. That's when the desert tribe realized something that ancient cultures in our own world used to believe that... We have to do war. Lapis contains the souls of gods and monsters. This what? is what the ancient builders needed. And to get it, they needed to go to the home of the piglins to collect more of this magical stone. They needed to go to the nether. Is there anyone left in Nether? There's no water to drink. Unless they drink the lava. Once the builders arrive in H -E double hockey sticks, they set up a camp, knowing that this is going to be a long journey. There, they build the Nether fortresses to store the resources that they brought with them, like saddles, horse armor, diamonds, and iron. What was already a wasteland gets harvested by the builders. They destroy the piglin bastions. They kill the piglins within to use their souls in the lapis to create life of their own. But... Man, these current piglins really can't catch a break. Imagine being born as a piglin right now. You're born into hell, where there is nothing nice and nothing fun, and then you're getting invaded. You don't know about the wars of the past, unless, I guess, maybe if they do some education, some schooling, but you weren't part of that. You weren't part of the reason that they became so reliant on, uh, on, on invading other places in order to get resources. It's not your fault. You were just born in this situation. Plan doesn't quite work. The dead piglin souls don't turn into lapis as they did before. But why? Well, it's I should probably kill more just to find out. Like, let's kill so many of them. We just, just to see if it does. Because the souls work differently in the nether. Rather than forming into magical stones, they transfer into the ground, into the sand. As their comrades fall, their souls are sucked from their bodies into the ground to create soul sand. It's oh, then no. that a new mob's created, the wither skeleton. Suddenly, the ancient builders are left fighting against the bodies of their own fallen warriors without souls, but still clinging on to their purpose, defending what they had once built themselves. The ancient builders had not only sucked the land dry of its natural resources, but they also accidentally created mobs that made the already deadly landscape even more dangerous. Out of themselves as well. They do eventually return to the overworld, and they come bearing riches. Blaze rods, nether wart, ghast tears, all containing magical properties. And so the builders begin to brew potions, depicting the achievement in the brewer sherds. The ancient builders were now able to surpass their physical abilities. They could be faster. They could resist lava. They could even regenerate themselves. The only thing they hadn't conquered yet was death itself. And so, equipped with soul sand and a bunch of wither skulls, they press on with their experiments. They combine... A bunch of wither skulls? Find the life-giving soul sand with the wither skeleton heads of their fallen comrades. Car oh, are they trying to bring them back? Because the soul sand would have the souls of those creatures inside of them, so they're trying to put the, the soul back into the head? I mean, it's not going to really work without a body, surely. ...its face into the red sandstone walls and depicting their worship to it on shirts. They could take care of themselves, and now armed with the knowledge to create life itself, they thought that they had finally done what the gods could not all those years ago, protect the overworld. As they placed the final head, there was a flash of light and a roar. The Wither was born. But despite their success, their hubris would ultimately... That doesn't look like a success. Be their downfall. The wither was uncontrollable. It destroyed the cities that they'd created.
It throws skulls at you to explode? That's really funny. Leaving nothing in its wake. Not even the other tribes were safe. The destruction was like nothing ancient builders had ever seen before. And so they did. We did it, guys. We saved the overworld. The only thing that they could do, they ran. They ran deep underground, where the Wither's blasts would meet more resistance from the stone and deep slate. But their persistence never wavered. They would have to find a way to fix this. They would be able to return to the overworld. They had to make this right, no matter the cost. So the fishermen have just completely drowned themselves. They have no idea what's going on. The builders saved the overworld with the wither. What did the the desert people do? Or is that the builders? Do the builders count as like the hay people and the bone arrow people because they were two different tribes or were one of those cultures invaded too much by the fishermen when they want to do the pirating, perhaps? Once again, the ancient builders were forced to start over, rebuilding a civilization that we now know as the Ancient City, a wide underground space that contains fragments of the builders' past adventures. Items like soul lanterns and soul torches are used to light the city, powered by the souls from their time in the nether. Enchanted items and potions of regeneration from their successful experiments at brewing can be found in the chests. Despite the circumstances, the builders found happiness. They would dance in the streets with music from Disc 5 playing in the background. At least From disc five? I thought that was a band. Would until fate once again came banging on their door. A builder would go- No, no, sorry. I don't want to- I'm not buying any. I don't want to buy any. Please leave. What's Amazon delivery? Is it? Mining some materials one day when they would hear something familiar, something that sends a bolt of fear through their bodies. The wither had found them. He ran home to warn the others. The city sounds the sirens and soldiers begin to march. The ancient- Quick, man the anti-aircraft weapons. Builders are preparing for war once again. The explosions grow louder and louder. The wither is slowly blasting its way through their intricate cave system. Fortunately, they'd planned an escape route. In the center of the ancient city is a large circular structure. The smaller versions of these found within the game files call these small portal statues. And if these are in fact small portals, then the large one in the- Wait, are these portals to the nether? Doesn't seem like a good place to go. Unless you send the wither into the nether, then he can't come back and then those poor fucking piglins are really gonna get it again. The city center must be a real portal, a big one. Underneath the portal, redstone circuits are found. These were experiments using different kinds of power output to try and ignite the portal, but up to this point, nothing had worked. So instead, they decided to turn to the most powerful source of energy they knew of, souls. Directly underneath the portal are blocks of soul sand that are lit. As the wither gets closer and closer, breaking through the final wall into the city, the portal finally ignites. But instead of celebration, there's nothing but stunned silence. Something is coming out of the portal. A horrifying creature with no eyes <laughs> lives off the power of souls. Sto okay, 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 okay. Maybe they'll fight each other. They'll fight each other and then everything will be fine. Them in its chest cavity, the warden. Now they're just left with a Godzilla versus King Kong situation. They all fight each other. Okay, well, at least maybe they'll both mutually assured destruction. They'll nuclear bomb themselves. Powerful beings duking it out. And then the builders hear it. A cry that they never thought they'd hear. The death cry of the wither. Builders they did it! The Wither, this thing that caused them to lose everything, is now gone. And their music disc 5 happened to record the entire event. This is a cause for celebration. The Builders begin to start the party, only for the Warden to turn its attention to them. It's- Yeah, what? <laughs> like, we did it, guys! I know King Kong is currently ravaging the city, but let's fucking- Let's go, baby! ...by sound, and so it starts to attack anything that makes a noise. With each death, a new block forms. The Skulk, a sentient block that uses the power of souls from fallen mobs to spread across the other blocks. Once again, the Builders' lives are in danger, but after all they've been through, they just don't have the energy to run anymore. Instead, they try to live in harmony with the Warden. They do what they can what? to deaden the noises by placing carpets or wool blocks all over the city. But in the end, it's no- Wait, they just live with it? They don't, like- I mean, I understand they don't have the energy to run anymore, but they're just putting carpets down and they're like, ah, well, I hope it doesn't kill me. Each opening of a chest would send the warden into a rampage. This is no way to live. And so the ancient builders try to leave their home one final time. They continue deeper into the cave. Okay, I was gonna say, if they really just stayed there until they were made extinct, that would be really shocking. Somewhere that not even the warden could find them. Though they needed something strong enough to hold it back if it ever tried to invade. And so the builders created strongholds. A place fortified so as to protect it against attack. The ancient builders made winding pathways and hidden doors so they could escape the warden should it ever break in. And the builders made one final attempt at escape. One last portal that this time would have to work. The end portal. The builders bid farewell to the overworld and jump in not knowing what might be waiting for them on the other side. <laughs> Dragon? <laughs> unsure if they'd oh man, they've really had it tough, haven't they? ...be able to return. The ends. The ancient builders enter this vast void of open space and begin to set up their new lives, building fortresses to... Oh, 
and they're gonna become the Endermen, aren't they? Of their resources, loot chests containing enchanted armor and weapons, diamonds and diamond plated armor, more advanced tools since the days of the Nether, ready to conquer whatever fearsome foes might come their way. Enter the Ender Dragons. And that's dragons, plural. Thanks to the amount of multiple dragon heads mounted on end ships, we can tell that this used to be a plentiful species. The ancient builders came to the end and saw these majestic beasts, how they had complete control over the skies, and they wanted that power for themselves. They Haven't we learned to stop meddling with the natural order of things? Has the Wither not taught you a lesson? Has the Warden not taught you a lesson? You come into here and you're like, oh god, we finally made it. We've made it away. Let's just chill out for a second and ooh, there's a there's a for some dragons around. Uh, what if we what if we did some more what if I meddled just a little bit more? Wanted to conquer the sky, which until now had been impossible. So they hunted down the dragons and used their wings to create elytra, another resource found in the end ships. These were the builders' prized possessions. So they continued to hunt these creatures to near extinction, much like they had done with other species in the past. It would seem that history continues to repeat. But the builders eventually realize that they're making a mistake. They see how they're bringing an entire species to extinction, and they want to right their wrongs. They use their technology and knowledge from past adventures, using the regenerative powers of the gas tier to create end crystals atop tall obsidian pillars. This will continually regenerate the last ender dragon, ensuring that it never dies. The ancient- <laughs> Wow, they really waited until there was one left before they realized, oh man, this is pretty bad. We probably shouldn't do this anymore. Builders can now rest easy knowing that they had saved a species. So <laughs> you did it, guys. You saved the dragons. That's right. You saved them. You saved them from being wiped out by you. Without a mate, would always have a popular. It's like saying I saved a worm from being stepped on by looking it on I, I, like across the road and then walking to it and then looking at it. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to step on it. I did it. I saved it. That was all me. Of one. And it seems like their sins eventually caught up to them. Food was yet again becoming scarce, but not all hope was lost. Defeating an ender dragon creates a portal back to the overworld. A few brave souls go through, but most others stay in the end. Although they were running out of supplies, there was one crop that was endlessly plentiful. Did they not have someone just like poke their head through just to see what's on the other side? Forest fruit, but it had some strange side effects. This constant diet of a fruit with teleportation properties causes the ancient builders to slowly evolve into the Endermen, now able to teleport across time and space. They're tall, dark, and handsome. Itself. But this comes at a cost. With this transformation, they slowly forget how to build, though they never truly forget how to pick up the blocks. And this <laughs> is the ancient builders spend the rest of their days, a race oh, teleporting sad. through time and space, picking up blocks. The remnants of a once great civilization brought down by their own pride. Yeah, that's incredibly sad. They did go through a lot of uh, pain, but they also caused a lot of pain as well. So I can't say that it was totally undeserved, but very sad. Oh yeah, the Illagers. The explorers who returned to the overworld reconnected with their old allies, the Illagers. It's here that they tell them stories of their adventures, tales of life-giving lapis, end portals, fierce beasts that they overcame. The Illagers revel at the ancient builders' resources, the elytra made from ender dragon wings, their portal technology, even though they don't quite understand it all. They worship the ways of the ancient builders, who would tell them stories and protect them from harm. And because they wanted to follow in their footsteps, they too began to experiment. The overworld was still a dangerous place. They needed ways to protect themselves, and so they created the Ravagers, terrifying beasts what? with even more terrifying origins. The Ravager was created from their fellow villagers. Their oh, dude, what? Their, brow, their green eyes, the noses, even their voices remain after the transformation. Oh god, what did they do? That wasn't the only thing that they did to these innocent captured villagers either. In the woodland mansions, large woolen heads of ill- I thought it was a dog. What did they do to it? They're found. And in the center of the head is a block of lapis lazuli. The illagers knew that the ancient builders saw lapis as a magical resource, so they took it and injected it directly into the brains of villagers in the hopes of gaining its incredible power. And you know oh my what? Oh my The Vindicators were born with incredible speed, power, and eyes that changed from emerald green to lapis. I'm sorry, and they injected it into their brain and it worked? <laughs> I would not advise you ever inject anything into you directly into your brain. That's... Probably not a great idea. This was the last straw for the villagers. According to the mob bestiary, these are the unspeakable acts that get the illagers cast out from regular society. From here, they would form their own civilization, wandering into the dark forests and taking over the woodland mansions, continuing their pursuit to bring back the ancient builders, whatever the cost. They become what's known as a cargo cult, where a group of isolated indigenous people begin to imitate the practices and technology from more advanced societies, despite not understanding how the technology works. The illagers would make structures like beds, 
maps, even end portals, but none of them work because they're only made out of wool. The illagers don't understand the true nature of these items. They made so it out of wool? Work, they are able to... I thought they inject- okay, the stuff they injected into their brain clearly messed with a few cells. The secret to new life, and they harness that power in the form of Totems of Undying. They use this power to create the Vex, the Phantoms, and they even try to create a new human, a new race of ancient builder. They try to create Steve. Throughout the Woodland Mansions, there are stacks on stacks of blue, cyan, and light blue wool. These are the same colors that Steve and his ancient builder ancestors wore. This was gonna be their final experiment, using these wool and blocks and their powers over life and death to become gods, to create their own race of ancient builders. Little did they know that the ancient builders did this exact same thing all those years ago. And sadly, history would repeat oh, itself. Oh no, After they're the making settles, another wither? Stands in place of the wool isn't a new race of builders, but instead zombies. The over Oh, well, that's not that bad. That'll be why they're dressed in the same clothes as Steve then, isn't it? The world now has yet another dangerous mob to worry about. Ah, they're only zombies. They're not that smart. I'm sure it's fine. And thus ends the story of the ancient builders and their influence on the overworld, a land that now lies in ruin, a shell of its former self. And yet despite everything, hope isn't lost. With the ancient builders gone, the overworld has had a chance to heal. There's no one left to Is Steve the last builder? And so nature begins to return, with the structures built by this ancient race descending into the earth, reclaimed by nature, biomes becoming more diverse. That is, until you- Nature is healing. The real way to save the world is to stop fucking with it. Show up. The builders desire for overharvesting resources and creating life continue through their descendants. You. Now we spend our time deforesting so we can have a nicer new house. Gutting the ground of whatever resources are left and killing whatever we see whether it's hostile or not. It's a story of destruction and selfish gain, of greed and ignorance and hubris repeating itself over and over again. And what I thought it was a story of five-year-olds learning how architecture works. This wasn't just a poetic story told to make the game more interesting. The story is a warning to us, the players. Think back to the ending credits of Minecraft. Quote, Sometimes I wish to tell them this world you take for truth is merely and I wish to tell them that they are in the they see so little of reality in their long dream. These two beings, these gods, these hosts, they're talking about us. The dream is Minecraft and while we play it we fail to see the moral that's being told by these two gods, the truth about reality, and how this game reflects our own history. In the 8th century, for instance, Vikings used a lot of timber for shipbuilding, construction, and fuel, which led to them deforesting most of Scandinavia. As they started to run out of resources and land, they began to invade the coastal areas of Europe, like England, France, and Ireland, only to do the exact same thing again, cutting down the trees. That's all humans do. Humans in their infinite greed will only seek more and more and more and more growth. You see it in countries today. In most businesses, what do they want? They want more shareholder value. They want more money. It's always more. It's always growth. If you're not growing, you're not winning. And we have to continue to harvest. You have to suck every single thing from people and from the world, from everything. All we want is more. Why can't it just be enough? Why can't it be okay? Why can't it be all right to maybe be a little bit smaller next time? I mean, you're fine. You, you will still wake up in the morning. Is it really going to ruin your day? Is it really going to change your lifestyle if you don't have another $5,000 if you're a, a CEO? Do you really need that that $5 million bonus? Or is the $12 million you get on your salary? I, I, I think that's okay. I think that's going to be fine. I don't think the extra $5 million is going to change your quality of your life all that much. Do we need that extra tree? Do we need to harvest everything? Why do we always need more? Why is that always the growth aspect of human civilization? Until those places began to lose their forest areas too. Sound like the fishermen and pirates from Minecraft? Europe's colonization of the Americas was for similar reasons. To access and exploit the abundant natural resources there. Even... Because we see it and we want it, we're like, ooh, there's more over there. More is the absence of stability. Hey, we're seeing the same thing with deforestation, burning fossil fuels, fighting one another for more power and control, just like we see with the piglins and the builders and the illagers and the nether, the end, and the overworld. It's a cycle of repeated abuse and neglect. Quote again from the ending. But it would be so easy to tell them. I will tell the player a story, but not the truth. No, a story that contains the truth safely in a cage of words, not the naked truth truth that can burn over any distance. We are playing the story, and the naked truth that they're talking about is that our world and will us. die if we let it constantly be ravaged of its natural resources. So maybe Well, we know that. The unfortunate thing is, we do know that. It's not a story we need to be told, because we already know it. I guess babies need to learn it at some point, but most people, adults that are watching this, adults that are playing these games, we already know. Thing is, 
we don't care. We don't care that, it, that the world is going to end. It's just not something that we can individually change. It's not like us individually can go out and do something. We need everyone as a collective to stop being as selfish as they are and uh, people in positions of power to do actual good things to avert that kind of result. Uh, but people don't care enough. It's not an as immediate of an issue. By the time it becomes an immediate issue, It'll be too late. Maybe the next time you log on to Minecraft, you'll see it a little differently. Maybe instead of a flat, blocky world, you'll see a reflection of your own. And remember, it can be beautiful so long as we, just like Steve, learn from the mistakes of the past. It's been a oh, we long won't. trope of game theory to prove to you that the hero of the game is actually the villain. In the game of Minecraft, and in the real world, that distinction ultimately falls on us to decide. But we're the baddies. That's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Man, that was uh, pretty in-depth. That was pretty deep. It goes into some very deep issues, and I think humanity as a whole is doomed, and we will all burn one day. But uh, until then, you can always subscribe to Game Theory. There are many, many theories left, and then a new individual will be taking over the new theoriness. Uh, if you want to see more of my dumb face, you can always subscribe to this channel as well.